UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I'll be your guide on this tour. It should be approximately one hour and 15 minutes. We have a short walk to the castle. Then we'll see the castle, uh, the stone museum, the courtyard. We'll walk at the top of the castle battlements. The ones who can walk, you will follow me, because inside the castle was living the French governor from Paris. Okay, we are going to cross the dry ditch which had been digged by the French crown after the crusade. This ditch had always been dried. It could be trick to kill enemies, to injure enemies, but even dry, it was a good option because assaultants were using bell fries, you know, big wooden towers on wheels. The aim was to connect the battlements and to walk over the walls. Quite dangerous. So with a dry ditch, there was a difference of level that the bell fry could not cross. So it's a good option. As well, they were using horizontal galleries at the level of the ground, protecting assaultants. And these assaultants wanted to connect the base of the walls thick. And so that's why a ditch is always important when you have you know, steep terrain and natural protection. Now, because of what happened, it's Albigen Saint Crusade. I'll tell you about Albigen Saint Crusade in the castle. Oh yes, it's 2,600 years old and the oldest wall is 1,800 years old. And from the Barbican, we can see some remains. Look at your back. You can see the two first towers on the right are different. They are lines of bricks to level the building as well you can see very small stones that's the way the gallo romans used to build at the period of the barbarians the fail of roman empire pay attention on the first tower you can see a line of big big stones over the head of people that was the ground level of the hill before the crusade so the wall was smaller and this wall had a different perimeter. Each time you can see grain, gold, stones, bamboo and perfect arrows. This huge tower since the late 13th century. This is when they changed sometimes the perimeter of the wall to perfect the defenses. When the perimeter was okay, they were keeping the Roman wall and adapted but adapted by the local lords few middle ages and they did what is called underpinning work. Well, you remember the line of big stones? Then you can see still very small stones from gallo roman period. That's the original depth of the walls. Not deep enough to add new floors. It would have been quite dangerous for the walls. It would have maybe fallen under its arm weight. So the French, who wanted to raise, to level up, to have a difference of level for poor men as well, and to prevent dead and girls, they decided to dig. They levered down the ground level, which was a mechanic way, to level up the Roman wall, and then they built brand new ground level, and the whole brand new bases, nothing to deal with that. Because the new French medieval bases can reach sometimes 24 feet under the ground level. Usually it's 20, 21, but that's yet a good seal. So underpinning work because stones were very expensive and it was safer as well to keep the original walls and to destroy it. Or brand new walls. This is dating back from the reigns of Philip III and Philip IV of France. Maybe you know Philip IV or you know what he did. He's the French king who killed all the Templar monks, these Templar knights, because he had debts. And so he killed everybody. No more Templars, no more debts, no more troubles. <laughs> That's a lesson of politics. <laughs> At the ground level, there is there are many soldiers ready to kill you, so be careful about the arrow slits nearby the gates. You're stuck by the portcullis. When two arches are nearly touching, that's the location of a portcullis. 
To protect the port culis, we are going to drop sand to the dead full pack. More space between the balls. Boiling sand. Quite. Or small stones, depending on. So we want to have you keep boiling. Boiling. Then, once you destroy the port culis, you have to destroy the big wooden gate. It's halfway between the gate, a door, and the shelter because it's closed this way. And you have beads to give strength to the ways of defense. The French word machicouli. I'm going to tell you why. A little bit apart. Protected by the, the walls. Because maybe you're cold. Oh no, you're from US. <laughs> and machicolation is the name of the big, big dead fall trap, the square one we have seen in the middle. Why? Because in French it's Machi coulis. Well, when you chew your food inside your mouth, is that looking nice? <laughs> no. So that's the same way when you drop a big stone ball on the head of enemies. Machi. Chew is mache in French. Chewing gum, but a machi. founded the French historical monuments in the second half of the 19th century, they did not care about the fortress. And imagine, they could not see the walls and the pinning work, they were missing battlements, it was poor, dangerous, the castle was a jail, there was unemployment, no school, so of course there was a high level of criminality. But he saved the town, he said stop selling the walls, classify, restore, because I know he was a lawyer, so he could read Latin and he had access to old texts and volumes, so he knew what was hidden by the streets. And he said the inner wall that we commented a lot is showing us the evolution of the art of life on 1,000 years, and the new walls are a witness of the Fifth Crusade. The Fifth Crusade is unique as a crusade, but this one is because it had been the first crusade in Occident. Then there was in Spain as well. And this crusade had seen the birth of the tribunal of Inquisition. You know, burning heretics and stakes, jail. So it's because of Albigensian Erica, because of the Pope, Gregory the Ninth. <laughs> voilà. So he saved the world town. Without Jean Pierre, maybe you would not be here uh, with me today, and maybe I would be starving and my daughters are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's get to the castle. <laughs> so they transformed the castle as a fortress as well, a small fortress inside the big one, because. The French governor came after 20 years of bloodbath, yet stakes, epidemics, anger, and when he came, it was not only to rule for the king, but to support the first inquisition of history. So you can imagine the mood when he settled with 220 soldiers, which is a lot for a fortress. Because the French historical monuments are machines of modern art, not only keeping uh, the old monuments safe. So there are festivals with music, sometimes theater, dance, and you will see inside the castle an exhibition explaining you why there are yellow stripes on the walls. You have seen that? You slept in Carcassonne. Yeah. So, the castle is dating back from the 12th century. It had been founded by the local lords one century before the crusade. There was feudalism around Carcassonne since the reign of Pépin the Short. He's not well known, but maybe you heard about his son, Charlemagne, Charles the Great. Pépin the Short is the one who invaded the Muslim Carcassonne. We were Muslim on the 8th century, a Saracen town, during 35 years. Pepin the Short invaded. He killed the Saracen leader and he named the first lord of Carcassonne. So 
medieval times as society began. Fiefdom is a Frank term as well, the title of count, for example. So it was a social hierarchy between the lords with the king at the top. It was as well since the reign of Charlemagne, a little bit later, an alliance, a pact between noblesse and clergy. Charlemagne was very, very Catholic and he, had, he made an alliance with the Pope. There were two big powers. It was as well easier to support together each other than to fight against each other. So they decided that all the lords had to be members of the Roman Catholic Church. That's why there was a chapel in each castle till the French Revolution. There is no more chapel. The chapel on this terrace got destroyed in the late 18th century because of French Revolution. So a chapel as a proof of good faith and they were supporting the Roman Catholic Church. To support a different kind of Christianism was an heresy. To be a different Christian was an heresy. The crime of heresy does not exist nowadays. There are different kinds of Christianism all around the world. But in Occident, the Middle Ages, it was perfectly um, forbidden. We were very good Catholics, I bet, because the Lord Strangaven did the first crusade of history. In 1096, Urban II, the Pope, called for the crusade because Turkish invaded Jerusalem. They were killing the pilgrims, going, walking to the tombstone of Jesus Christ. And so he called for the crusade. We did it. Uh, at the Vikings of Carcassonne and Albi, at the north of Carcassonne, as well our Swiss the Counts of Toulouse, the big land owners of the south of France, did the crusade. The south and the north were quite different. You know Occitanie, Occitania. We had a very specific culture, our own language, as many people in the French Kingdom at the time, but it was spoken from Bordeaux to Provence. So it was the language most much spoken in the nowadays perimeter of the French country. We were different and we had a big ego, let's say the truth. Above all, the count of Toulouse. You know it was an invasion, so they were sharing the land, who's going to rule, how are we going to organize everything. It was never working, working with the Occitan. And the crusaders not only have taken Jerusalem, they murdered a lot of people, it had been a bloodbath as well, what we did not like. So when we came back from the crusade, we started to take distances, as we say in French, with the Pope and the King. For the King it was easy, because all along the, the 11th century, yet he started to lose his fear of influence. Paris was far away, they had another language, they had not a lot of money compared with us. For the Pope, it was different. He had a web of abbeys and churches and cathedrals. It was the Gregorian reform of the Middle Ages. The Catholics wanted to uh, settle their power. They wanted to show they were important. They wanted to be respected and to clean the mass in the Roman Catholic clergy. Dating back from the first half of the 20th century, at that time, a man who had been who was living at the bottom of the walled town, Louis Lacombe, decided each Sunday uh, to take measures and to reproduce the fortress as it was at the time. He reproduced what is classified, so the two walls outside the castle. He did not build the former cathedral, neither this amphitheater. Because it did not exist, this is not a Gallo-Roman amphitheater. It's only dating back from the 1960s. They did to enjoy the echo given by the walls. And this is where there is an open-air festival in July in Carcassonne. We are going to walk around the walls of the castle. We are going to cross the watch tower, the big tower with battlements.
you can see the choir transept of the church. The church was Romanesque before the Crusades. Then the French crown gave a Gothic aspect to the church. Because the king is ruling from Paris, you know that. The king is supporting the first inquisition. And this church still does belong to the Dominican order. This monks dressed in white who were in charge of inquisition. And at the time, the Gallo-Roman towers were covered by flat roofs in tiles. So they got restored as they were before. But you can imagine that during Middle Ages, they filled a lot of windows with brand new arrow slits. This wall is the oldest wall of the wall stand because the Celts who founded 2,600 years ago were using wooden palisades. The Romans kept the wooden palisades when they came, and they spent money and time for a real wall with the barbarian invaders. Despite of this late 3rd century wall, the Visigoths invaded on the 5th century. Carcassonne had been part of one Visigoth kingdom from the 5th to the 8th, then remember Saracen town. So with the projector, they marked the lines and then they glued, it's not painted, it's aluminium, wow. yellow aluminium. Then it got glued by the team of Felice Varini. He's a modern artist from Switzerland. And as remember, the monuments are Messines. You say Messines? Messines. Ah. ah, when you're giving money to promote arts. I mean, this room is dedicated to Renaissance, then you have Middle Ages. So they were tired of play on words and people uh, looking at the tres mas, and so they gave the name of tres mas, and they were very proud of that town. True start. Allez. Lords ruling on 
on the land. So when you were giving your word, it was sacred. That's why it's voted and giving eco. So the local roads were not showing off with the architecture outside, the sculptures, the big windows. But they wanted to show off they were wealthy and important. So in the keep, they paid for a very, very expensive piece of art, which is wonderful. All the sky of the world is lapis acid. It's a precious stone imported from Afghanistan, the opposite side of the world at the time. Then you have fights. The scene they elected was fights. It's important. Well, these are not the local lords fighting during the crusade. This is, these are fights talking of how, explaining how the France invaded the Saracen town. We can see it clearly on this side. This is well kept, and you can see knights attacking each other. It's not a justice show because look. Between these two horses, the brown and the white, you can see a body falling. I said a body having beheaded. It's violent, it's the fight. And with some rules, you can identify the characters or the origin of the characters. Brown horse is ridden by a Saracen. Circular sheet, typical of the Saracens, and that's why the Occitanian was his illness, but we get our future. We do not speak Occitan name in the streets, but there is no Occitan school uh, in the, the streets. And we are still um, living with values, like respecting each other, living in peace. You have seen by the streets, maybe, but what is brown? And it's not, it does not matter for us. It does not matter for us. So we get this spirit of which have been the cause of this crusade. So that's the conclusion of the guided tour. I leave you there because then you can take all the time you want in the shop. If you're looking for good books, all the books of the shop have been selected. Whatever the size, the liver for kids, for people, whatever, it has been selected by the French historical movement.
Yeah. <laughs> 